<laughs> because it got you stupid ass niggas believing in his laws also. Now we're not telling you to go off and, and break the law according to uh, Esau's law because there's penalty in this situation. You gotta be uh, wise as a serpent. You gotta be smart and circumspect about this thing. But at the same time, that don't mean turn around and break the Most High's laws either. To uphold his law, the Most High will deliver you out of that if you're trying to do righteousness in the, in the face of wickedness. But back back to the point, y'all envy the oppressor trying to be like him and try to uphold his laws and stuff. Go back to so it says, uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 54, so that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children which he shall leave. And toward the wife of his bosom, meaning he gonna be hard against her. He ain't gonna be hard against her. But rightfully so, because look at the situation that she's got us in. Because she didn't choose death back when uh, back when this shit was going on. Man, that shit goes all the way back to Eve. Yeah, it goes dead yeah, exactly, it really does. It actually goes all the way back to Eve and the serpent, when, back when the, uh, the devil himself was a dark-skinned man with the serpent. But, but playing it out throughout time and reincarnation, it keeps happening over and over and over. Back when Eve, she listened to that so-called, he wasn't a white man then, but she listened to the serpent. Yeah, the spirit of the so-called white man. Yeah, exactly, he had the spirit of the so-called white man, exactly. You know, she listened to him when she wasn't even supposed to be listening to him in the first place. Then later on, in another analogy, is the time of, uh, in captivity under these devils, here, right here in America. When they became willing man witches in that day. If anybody's seen that movie Django, you'll see how many of them, them so-called nigga women was, was dealing with uh with these Sir white Candy. men. My Monsieur Candy and the other the other uh the other uh, slave owner up in there. Hey daddy, what you want me to treat him like, daddy? Those are the house niggas that was getting popped. The house nigga women that was getting popped. But like that other, uh, the one that was dealing with Monster and Kenny said, when you told that nigga to leave, I knew you weren't talking to me. No, I wasn't talking to you. Y'all done, y'all done became one and the same. And if the black man don't know that right now the wicked black woman is, is uh, his enemy, then what the fuck is wrong with you? That go for Hispanics as well. And what the fuck is wrong with you? These women are not out to do you good. They're not out to bring you closer to the Heavenly Father. Get, uh, it was more than a whole lot. Get, uh, Isaiah 3. Yeah, 3 and 9, 3 and 12. It's Isaiah chapter 3, verse 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors. Now, children, a younger race of people, or an insignificant race of people, are their oppressors. That's the so-called white man. Those are the ones that oppressed us. You didn't know that uh, we had a word called master. It didn't mean master. It meant oppressor in the Hebrew. That, that's what that word, that's where that word comes from. That was our oppressor. That's the man that has a face of oppression over us. See? It says, as for my people, children are their oppressors, so-called white men, and women rule over them. And women, and our own women rule over us. So that shows you how they work together. That's why our women get higher job positions than us. That was way back from Willie Lynch. That's way back when Willie Lynch said that. Take the strongest man, beat the, the strongest man to death, and the village beat him to death, or in the tribe beat him to death, the second strongest beat him nearly to death. Now everybody else is gonna cower in fear and fall in line. And then separate them, separate the, the men from the, from, the, from the household, and let the women rule the household. So now there's no stable, there's no stable uh, mind uh, 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 dwelling throughout the family that's gonna keep everybody solidified and down and, and, and strong and held down, that, that, that connection to the Most High ain't there. He gonna have you, you women trying to call on to the, to the Lord, which it ain't gonna work because it's out of order. <laughs> which also uh, makes you try to make decisions, which y'all suck at decision making. Let's be straight about that. There's no, it's, it's not a known fact that women are, are, are bad, I mean, uh, that are, they're good decision makers. It's a, it is a known fact that women are not good decision makers. I don't care if, my mother is a great decision maker, but she still fucks up. Well, they, seek, they seek counsel from like five, six different people. That's exactly what they five, seek Five, six counsel. different bitches. By the time you're done with your counseling, 
you got a million and one different ways to go about one thing. Right. And I'm going to tell you this. I'll tell you where my mom is smart. She knows the right people to seek counsel for from. And what she do is usually a man. A lot of times it's me. Because I understand the situation she's in. You know, because I understand a little deeper for her. As well as I have a man perspective that's going to really analyze the whole situation for me. My mom really seeks counsel. Not even if my dad or stepdad. She may go to them for other shit. But she mainly seeks counsel in me. We're making a, a like a business decision. Not that I'm Mr. Business Savvy, but I can see, I can see straight through the bullshit though. Where she may make a, uh, or a woman naturally would make a, a haste, a hasteful emotional uh, decision. She sees counsel for somebody that's not gonna think that way. Continue, brother. Back at the start of the top again, because this scripture talking about the so-called white man and the so-called uh, Israelite woman. Are are, uh, are 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 working against the, the Israelite men. Yeah, they're in cahoots together. It's Isaiah 3 and 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to earth. They just said that they lead us. They that lead thee cause thee to err. You know why? Because that's why, in the, in, especially in the so-called black households, the woman is like, she is the, the king and shit. The woman is the king of the house. Hey, she'll let you know too. I'm your mama and your daddy. Yeah, that's exactly. That's like, like, like it's supposed to be done to not have a daddy. I mean, there, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of no good niggas out there, but they're attracted to no good bitch too. So, so who? So I would rather have a no good man rule my household than, than a good woman to rule the household. Cause a good woman gonna have a, a good man. She gonna be in order. So that's almost like those two almost don't go together. But the point being is, I, I, the, the, the man and the, uh, the white man and the, the so-called Negro woman and the Hispanic woman, they're in cahoots to destroy so-called Israelite, you know, men, Negro and Hispanic and Native American men. That's the whole point of their job right now, because they have a ruler seat position over them. So they don't want to give up that power. So what they gonna do? They are gonna do whatever it takes to stay in power. Now jump back over. Then we're going to jump back into the hair and go back. Now, this is uh, Deuteronomy 28, 55. So that he will not give us a lot. I'm going to start at 26. Deuteronomy 28 and 56. The tender and delicate woman among you, uh -huh. which would not have ventured to set the sole of her foot. Precious woman that was, that was royal and, and I don't want to say queenly, but she was a precious woman something to, to, you know, a virgin chaste to her husband, obedient, all of that, that was, uh, that was, that was a, 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 a woman that, not to be lifted up, but a woman that to be reverenced or respected in, in some way. Go ahead and put it this way, man. Even our women in the ancient days, in their humblest form, had more grace than the proudest women nowadays. That's right. That's right. They, they were more adored and, and uh, mesmerizing than the proud woman that has what you would think would to be everything now and then. Yeah. Uh, one of our women walking by, chased, head down, fully covered, ready and willing to do anything for a man and not talking back to her man, would get more recognition and admiration than a bitch walking by in some Gucci heels right. with a Gucci bag matching. Little ass skirt yeah. or whatever. A nigga would look at that bitch like, damn, I wanna fuck, but a nigga would look at the other one like, damn, I need a woman like that. Mm -hmm. That's something I need right there. And, and, but our people are so destroyed that they, the J the J men probably don't feel like they deserve a woman like that. At the same time, they don't. Yeah, at the same time, and they don't because she gonna hold you to a standard that you gotta keep up to. Right. I know. I was once in the world, and I came across some decent, well, in the worldly sense, decent women. And I knew all this, this weed smoking, all the shit that I used to do. I can't be doing this shit. All the bullshit I used to do, I can't be doing that dealing with this one. Now she worth it. I need to do something. But with a real uh, uh, godly woman, so to speak, is in the presence. That that's the one that you're supposed to. That's gonna keep you. Hey, hold on, baby. The Sabbath chain this week. You need to make sure that you don't go off, man. I got the dinner already. I'm already ahead of you. I got you, baby. I got you. Uh -huh. Whenever you slip, I got your back. Check your ingredients. That part. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, baby, I'm about to go. Stay with my mom for a week. It's around yeah. that time. 
Yeah, you know, I set, I set up meals for y'all already or whatever. Bro, come on, man. That's not going to happen in <laughs> Right. You know? Hey, brother over here living in fantasy land now. <laughs> hey, but, but it ain't fantasy land because that's going to come in the that's kingdom. That's how it's supposed to be, though. And that's how it's supposed to be. That's how it was at a, at a certain time. But that's how it's supposed to be. And that's how it's going to be when the kingdom of heaven is ushered in. It says, Deuteronomy 28 and 50, 56, the tender and delicate woman among you, which will not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eyes shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom, and toward her son, and toward her daughter. Her eyes shall be evil uh, uh, toward her husband and her children. That, that's exactly what's going on now. When you look at these, these women of our nation, they just got just disgust for the men that they with. They always got the, the nice batting eyes and you know for the for the men that they think or the men that they really think they want. But for their man, they don't really appreciate it. I mean, I I, I will give a little testimony real quick. Just this week, my BM was uh was uh or my wife, whatever. She was uh she just got in an argument with her mom about what type of man I am. Right? Her mom had nothing but negative things to say, but she was jumped on my team to be like, nah, he's a good dad, he's a good man, this, this, and that. But then after the other, but soon as that's talking to her mom. Now, when she's dealing with me, I got nothing but but questions and, 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 and rebellion from her. I'm like, damn, you just labeled all the shit that I'm worth humbling down for, but you won't humble down. Hey, but that, you know why? Because she defended you in the corners and not making herself look bad. Right. Right. That's why. <laughs> yep. Man. She defended you to, to, to back up herself. Yeah, so she don't look like a bad person. Like, like she's with a, 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 a dude that's doing this and doing this and not doing this. Nah, he's doing this, doing this. And doing. Okay, so you're not that stupid then. You're not, yeah, you're not that bad. Yeah. But I know why nobody stupid, but anyway. Go ahead, brother. But yeah, she's gonna be evil toward uh, her husband and her children also. These women don't really treat their kids like they love them. If you did, you wouldn't be feeding them all this fucking fast food around here. If you did, you would be preparing righteous meals for them starting way in the morning. Righteous foods. That's that's a man, that's, you know, I know you so-called uh, Northern Kingdom, Native American and uh, Hispanic women do that. But y'all be burying the pork in the fucking ground and having that shit brewing and, and, and queuing all damn day. So it's so tender that, that it fall apart and melt in your mouth. But the shit is fucking pork. <laughs> you know? These nigga women, the so-called Judite uh, women, y'all y'all don't even give a shit. Y'all just take y'all kids and go get a fucking five dollar pizza from uh, Little Caesars and be like, here is food, eat. Hey, these Judite bitches is just as bad too. Cause they be, uh, they be letting this shit, all the pork simmer in the broth with the food to to the motherfucking pork becomes a part of the goddamn collard green DNA <laughs> DNA building shit. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. part of being lazy as well, though, brother. That's, I mean, I, I mean, I grew up in a so-called black household, yeah. you know, and so I, I, I watched a lot of shit happen through laziness. Yeah. I'm not yeah. necessarily saying my mom, but just being around the element of, of the so-called Negro women, you gonna see the elements of labor. Like, hey, why don't you just do this instead of doing that? And they don't see it. I, I did it the way I know how to do it. Well, I just gave you another way to know how to do it. Right. Instead of putting hog moths or fucking uh, 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 pig feet or whatever the fucking in the uh, smoke, ox smoke uh, yeah, put oxtail or turkey necks or some smoked turkey necks, yeah. smoked turkey leg in there. That's the most easy. Man, that's it. But no, they don't. They don't. They don't. They don't go back and do the things that take time to show that they really care about the family. Hey, keep going, bro. I got hey, a question. That, you think his too, and a, a heathen to be more willing to do that than the truth. Heathens do it. Heathens do it. My, uh, my, my BM, she a heathen. She a heathen, whatever. But, you know, once I came into the truth, that's how she started cooking the greens, the turkey day. You know? She cut out all the pork and shit. Especially after I told her fucking pigs don't even sweat, she was like, oh, hell no. Nah. Right. Cut that shit out real fast. You know? And my sister didn't stop eating her little seafood. Shit, but she stopped allowing my son to eat that shit because she knew she was gonna get that smooth first out of the house. Like my mom even makes like a righteous gumbo. You know, I'm trying to get her to make it. I'm trying to get her to make some of that little extra money. 
Try to get her to uh, make some of that for the brothers. You know, without no pork sausage in there, she might get all beef sausage. You know, do it with chicken, no shrimp, no clams. She used to put crab legs, she used to put all that shit in there. But she can do it, and some of the brothers when I was in LA got to taste it before. But she really hooked it up. Brother was like, damn, this this gotta be breaking. I'm like, no. The brother Carrial stood right over the top, made sure that she made it the right way. And she did. She wasn't gonna sneak no shit in, you know, but but she made it the right way for brothers, man. But it, like there's ways to do shit, but they don't take those those long, hard uh, uh, ways that show that you really care, because that's how you love somebody. You gotta do something to prove you love somebody. Yeah, yeah you love indeed, not just in words. <laughs> love me with love me with your actions. Don't just love me with your mouth and your words. Which is what our people do. Oh, I love Jesus. Oh, I love you guys, but do something to prove it. Wake up at the butt crack of dawn to, to, uh, to make, some, make breakfast for your kids, not just cereal. Get up and make them eggs and, and turkey bacon and pancakes and shit like that. Toast or oatmeal or whatever. Get up at them hours to do that type of stuff. Go and spend the extra to make oatmeal. Or, you know, spend the extra to get organic or whatever, the best stuff that you can possibly get out of the worst in this society. Sacrifice that. Sacrifice your hair and your nails to do that. You ain't supposed to be wearing that shit anyway, which we gonna get into that. Is that the end of that right there? I go back to, no matter of fact, go to Proverbs 30 and 10. We about to, the, the scriptures show you what a woman's supposed to be doing, and we about to point out what this bitch ain't doing. What she won't even attempt to do. Proverbs 30 and 10. Accuse. Accuse not a servant. 31 slot. Slot. Proverbs 31 to 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. That, that's a, a, a rhetorical question. That's a marking question. Who can find a virtuous woman? They ain't nowhere to be found. Trust me. They, you just ain't gonna, if you stumble across one, it's like a, it's straight from the most high. You better, you better sew that up. And, 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 and you know, praise the most high for, for, for sending that to you. It's Ecclesiastes 8, 7, and 26. And I find more bitter than death the woman yeah. whose heart is snares and nets. I find more bitter than death the woman. The woman is the worst thing. Oh, man, we got the woman is the worst thing that can happen, you know, for, to a man, a wicked woman. Matter of fact, I got a quick piece up. I'll grab it real quick. It's, uh, Sirach 25. This is Sirach 25 and, uh, and, and 19. If we, we, if we just don't get on how wicked you fucking women are, we're going to stay in this book a lot. But it's uh, 30, 25 and 19. All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. So these wicked women, man, they, they, they're, they're, all wickedness is little to the wickedness of a woman. So she all she she started sin. The woman started sin when she sinned talking to another man, and then taking a, something that the man was not supposed to do and giving it to her husband, listening to another man, and then gave it to her husband that he wasn't supposed to do. Made him go off. Like this thing is big, man. This thing is big. Matter of fact, let me let me um, stop that. Let me out that real quick. Just to get off your bitch's hair, man. So we get off your bitch's hair real quick. Um, Isaiah 3 and 17 Therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion and I will discover their secret parts that's a plague that's why the so called negro women have inch hair and shit don't go past their shoulder blade when every other woman on the earth can grow their shit all the way down to their kneecap the back of their knees you're the only woman that can't grow your hair down there and I'm not seeing a lot of uh Latin and the Native American women that can do it either. You may get it down to the middle of your back, but it don't go much further than that. I know in the kingdom, the longer you can get it, the more glory you're going to have on you. I want them all the way down to the ankle. If I can get it, it's going to be wrapped up and covered up, and you're going to have handmaids to take care of it. So stop being lazy with that shit. I even heard that uh, 
you know, I just put it out there that, that women do this. They get jealous of their daughters, so they cut their daughters here so they don't have to do it. I heard, I heard of that before. That, so they don't have to braid and, 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 and curl and, and press and all this other stuff. Their daughter's hair that's, that's all the way down here, they'll cut that shit up. They'll convince them that having it up here is just as good. And, 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 and something else that further goes into you, matter of fact, grab um, for me, uh, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 11 and like, um, but uh, uh, y'all don't even realize that these so-called uh, elite uh, uh, stars up there, Rihanna and them, they, they shaving their head, half their head off. That's part of these churches coming to pass also. But they making y'all believe that that's something to glory about. That ain't shit to glory about. That's an excuse to try to live something better than what you got. Because you ain't got, you can't grow your shit down way back, you know, down past your butt. So they say, okay, well, we're going to flip it and try to, try to cut it real short. That ain't no glory unto you. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. Does not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? Yep, that really saying men aren't supposed to have long hair. Simply put, unless you're a Nazarite, right? You're taking that vow. That's the only way. It says, verse 15. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, uh -huh. for her hair is given for a uh, salat. For her hair is given her for a covering. That's right. A woman's hair is given for a covering. That's what women should be. That even nature teaches you that. That that's what you're supposed to have, and you're supposed to protect it. You're supposed to cover it up and protect it. Read that part in the letter also. In the letter chapter, talk about covering the hair. It says, uh, First Corinthians 11 and 5. But every woman, I'm start at 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Yahweh Shah. That's right. The Lord, who you ignorantly call Jesus Christ, it's the head of every man. This is the order that everybody should be in. If you're not in this order, if you're a so-called Native American, uh, Negro, or, uh, or Hispanic, or Latino, then you're out of order. So the head of the man is the Lord. Go ahead. That's right. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of the woman is the man. So we have an order set up so far as the Lord, the man, and the woman. Continue. And the head of Yahweh Shai is Yahweh. So we got the Most High God, then the Lord. They are separate. The Most High God, then the Lord, then man, then woman. That's the order of it. If you're not in that order, then you are out of order. If you reverence your woman to make all the decisions and do everything, if you, as a man, if you want your woman to do everything and be the head of the household, then you are out of order. And you are going off. It's different if you want to have that power seat and your woman keep fighting with you because she happens to have it. Because Esau gives a lot of the power to these women. They give them the job. They give them the position to make uh, uh, decisions in the household. They've been raised through tradition to, uh, to be the head of the household. But that don't mean that we're supposed to keep that. We're supposed to keep the commandments of the Most High. And that was one of them. Every man praying or prophesying Having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. When the man has a hat on or a beanie or a scarf or a do-rag or, any, or anything like that, he prays or trying to um or trying to prophesy, say something before it happens. And it, 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 it's basically uh, what does it say there? It is you dishonoring your house. Yeah, you you dishonoring your, your uh, the Lord. Because, because the the appearance, the, the the formation of our body is supposed to be. The glory, uh, uh, the glory of Yahweh Shai, the honor of Yahweh Shai. Because our body is supposed to be like a living sacrifice to Yahweh Shai. And we're made in the, in the image of Yahweh Shai. As far as the laws, statutes, commandments, but also the appearance, right. the physical appearance. So for us to cover our head, man, that's, you know, if our head is Yahweh Shai, that's, that's just honoring our head. Hey, Adam wasn't rocking no fitted. Right, to say it plain for you niggas, man. Adam wasn't rocking no fitted. Prophets and 
and had a crown in their head covered. Yeah, they, they weren't wearing do rags back in Babylon. Yeah. And even when they like the Mitri, the Mitri still has the head open up here. Yeah, your, 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 your crown is still covered. You're uncovered. So like, the head may be covered, but your crown is still uncovered. That's the way you really wrap a Mitri. Like the turbans, when they have uh, like the East Indians and shit, I don't know how they wrap there, but I think there looks like it's covered. But when you see men of the Lord out there with the turbans on, theirs are uncovered. Or they just wear the headband. It says, But every woman that prayeth or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head. Every woman that prayeth or prophesied or says something before it happens with her head uncovered dishonoreth her man. Dishonoreth 